Welcome to this video where I show you how you can run an application with Payara Micro on a Kubernetes cluster. So what we will do today is that we have a simple WAR application. We will package it in a Docker container and then we prepare it to run on the Kubernetes cluster and we'll call an endpoint of that WAR file to make sure everything is okay. So let's get started with this demo. demo. I'm using Docker Desktop, which, which has also support for Kubernetes. But you can, of course, use any Kubernetes environment, uh, including your cloud infrastructure that you prefer. So for this demo, I will use a simple Hello World style application where there is one endpoint which just returns Hello World. The application is prepared as a WAR file, so it is a very simple um, file that we need then to package within a Docker container uh, since all the runtimes on the Kubernetes cluster are containers. We are going to use the popular Docker container format for this. So therefore we need to have a, a Docker file and the contents of this Docker file is very simple. We start from the official Payara micro image and the, the latest one which is 5.19.2 and we copy that test application to it that deploy directly so that the application is automatically deployed when the container starts so let's create then that um, docker image by executing a docker build command we will name the docker image by our micro Kubernetes and the current directory is the directory which contains that test up bar file and that docker file. The execution of this um, image, uh, the building of this image is uh, very fast because I did it uh, previously, um, but it is just two steps uh, taking the official image and deploying the bar file to the correct location. We interact with our Kubernetes cluster with the command line tool, which is called kubectl. This kubectl uh, can send commands to the, our Kubernetes uh, cluster, and we can also see what is going on and retrieve some information. So to see if everything is set up correctly, you can execute the version command of kubectl, where you see the version of the client and the server in this case, it is the version 1.10, which I'm running of Kubernetes. Kubernetes can be used to connect to multiple Kubernetes clusters. It's, uh, so you have to define which one. If you are using the Docker desktop uh, program, as I do, then it is set up automatically to connect to that uh, Kubernetes instance. You can always check which configurations there are present uh, for that kube control um, program by executing the kube control config get contacts command. You see that there is only one uh, context defined, which is the current one, which is uh, pointing to the Docker desktop cluster. Everything is in place now so that we can start sending commands to our Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we have the Docker uh, container ready. We have kube control uh, configured so that it's pointing to the correct cluster. And with the kube control run um, command, we can launch a container on our Kubernetes cluster. First thing we specify is a label which will be used for all the resources which are created. I come to that later. Um, Another important parameter is, of course, the Docker image that we are going to use. Uh, we have created that Payara micro image uh, in, the, in the previous commands. We also indicate the port on which our application is accessible. That is uh, later on required to make our application um, available to the outside world. And I show here you also some more advanced options. In this case, I'm limiting the number of CPUs and mem memories to that Docker container, um, which I uh, create. The 
run command um, creates a resource uh, which is called a deployment. So let's um, have a look which resources are created uh, within the cluster because there are more resources created than just a deployment resource. With the cube control get all, we can have a list of all the resources. Most of the time it is too much because our cluster can contain a very, uh, very large number of resources. But in our case, uh, we are working with almost an empty cluster. Um, it is um, very nice to see what is created for this case. As the command showed, we have a deployment resource available with that um, name Payara Kubernetes Test. It is running, there is, um, there is one available, available, so everything went fine. But you see also that there is a replica set created that's for more advanced situations where you are going to scale Kubernetes um, and your application on Kube and Kubernetes. And for a next uh, video about that topic, I will refer you to the um, scaling and clustering of Payara micro applications on Kubernetes. And we have, of course, the pod, which is containing our container, which is also running. This is a high level overview of each resource with not much detail. We can ask more details about each resource with the describe command of uh, cube control. So let's start with that deployment. Um, that um, it has uh, created so cube con control describe deployment and then our name that which we have defined the Kubernetes uh, DPR Kubernetes test and we see a list of data which is retrieved from the cluster um, for instance add that label which is created um, that we have again here that we have one instance of our application running that we have uh, this template for the pod so when uh, in the case that we should scale and uh, and cluster our application then the uh, this is the template which is used for each uh, each container and each pod and you see also that the replica set is created to handle those um, number of instances. Quick look um, at that replica set, although um, we are not going into detail of, of scaling in this video. So the cube control describe replica set. And then we need the exact name of that replica set. So I do a copy and paste of that name. And then you see that the um, information again here is um, uh, repeated about labels, selectors, um, and things like that. Also the pod template, but you also see that the replica set is uh, responsible for creating and removing the pods, uh, because you see here the message, the event that the pod, that a specific pod is created um, as a response um, to our run command. That pod, you can also have a look in more detail the contents with the describe pod command. And again, with copy and paste, we look at the correct uh, pod. And especially interesting here is the volumes. Uh, if you have more complex applications, then you probably want to assign it some volumes. And then you can see here um, how those volumes assigned, how they um, are accessible from within your pod and your container. So that's um, that's very useful here, um, information that you can find in that description of your pod, which is running. We have seen that our application is now running within a container and within a pod. So let's see if we can see some logs so that we can prove that it is uh, running. So again, request all the pods which are uh, running. We see that there is only one pod, it is running. So um, let's have a look at the log file which is generated 
by the application within that pod, within the container that we have, that we have. So we can execute the command cube control log, and then use the name of that pod as a parameter. And then you see that our application is running and that we have output from Payara Micro that it is started up, that our application is listening on the test app um, context route. And we see also here uh, a URL emitted by Payara Micro. But if we try that um, URL, it will be not accessible. So nevertheless, let's try it. And you see it says could not resolve host because that host, of course, that Payara Kubernetes test, uh, which is effectively the pod name, is only um, available within the cluster, not outside the cluster, so not on my machine. So we need to do an additional step to make our application available to the outside world, uh, outside of the cluster. And we can do that with the expose uh, command of Kubernetes. And you can expose um, various kinds of things, but the most common thing is, of course, that you expose a deployment so that your application is ex uh, exposed with a single URL. So it doesn't matter if you have multiple instances running, it will always de be available uh, through that single um, URL. We define, of course, the name of the deployment we want to expose, and we specify the type of exposure. In this case, the node port is um, OK, because I'm using Docker Desktop. So if the um, application is accessible on the node itself, it is also accessible uh, from my uh, command line here. Um, this, of course, depends on the environment where you are, and you have other types. Uh, you have also type, the type load balancer, but you can have a look at our Kubernetes uh, user guide to have more information about this um, type parameter. And then the last uh, parameter is the name that we um, give to that service, uh, because uh, when we execute that cube control expose command, um, it will create a service for us. So this uh, Kubernetes test is the name of that service. So let's have a look at that, ser that service. So it has created the Kubernetes test um, service as instructed uh, with the command. You see also that there is another service running, but that is a Kubernetes specific one. Um, and the most important thing here that you see that there is a port mapping done now. Um, because we specified that node port, we have a port mapping from that 8080 port, which is the IR micro port by default, to a port number, um, which is then accessible from my machine. So with that information, um, we can uh, use now the correct curl uh, command to um, access our application, so localhost, uh, because it's on my machine, the port number reported by um, the Kubernetes uh, service um, information there. It was available on the test app uh, route, and then the endpoint is the hello. So uh, you see that the response now is correctly, and we have um, our application uh, from uh, within Kub the Kubernetes cluster available on my machine. And if you use the correct exposure, you can um, expose it, for instance, also to the internet. Thank you for watching this video. And I hope you have an idea how you can run your application with Payara Micro on a Kubernetes cluster. If you want to see some more advanced um, features of Payara Micro specific for Kubernetes, Look uh, for the scale and cluster uh, of Payara Micro on Kubernetes video. Thank you. Have fun. Bye.